Hi, in the last part of making our RPG, we made a player object that moves and animates, and enemies that move around the room and follow the player. In this part, we are gonna make real-time sword combat so the player can attack enemies to defeat them. We are also gonna allow the enemies to hurt the player so you can lose and the game restarts. So let's open our project and get started. We are gonna create an object called OBJ Attack. It'll be a quick animation of a sword swinging. When we press space, we'll create an instance of that object in front of the player and that instance will be destroyed after its animation has finished playing. Any enemies that touch that instance will lose health. This is how attacking will work. Let's select the objects folder, then this menu up here and double click on objects to create a new object. I'll name this obj attack. Let's go and add the create event to this object. I'm just going to initialize one variable, damage. This is the damage that this attack object does. And we are not going to make multiple, but if you want to have multiple kinds of objects with different damage values, you can do that. Now, as I said before, when its animation ends, we want this instance to be destroyed. So I'll go to its events, then other, and select animation end. This event runs when the animation of this instance plays and has ended. In this event, I'm going to call the instance destroy function. So when the animation has ended, the instance is going to be destroyed. In the inspector for this object, I'll set the sprite to the SPR slash sprite. Now let's set up how the player is going to use this to attack. So in the objects, let's double click on obj player. In the create event over here, let's create three new variables. We have HP, which is how much health the player has. We have HP total, which is how much total health the player can have. And then we have damage, which is how much damage the player does. When we later add XP and levels, the total HP and damage will go up with each level. So these values will change during the game. Now for attacking, let's go into the step event. At the end of this event, I'm going to add a condition to check if the space key was just pressed. This function checks if the key has just been hit and for it to run again, you have to release the key and hit it again. In the block for this condition, let's create a new instance of the obj attack object. This will be created at the x and y position of the player and the same depth as the player. Once the instance is created, its reference will be stored in this local variable over here. We are storing its reference because we want to set two values in the new instance, its rotation angle and damage. We'll change its angle so it rotates to face the same direction as the player. That direction is the direction from the point 0 and 0 to the point created by the WAST input. Then we'll set its damage but instead of overriding it, we'll multiply it with the damage of the player. So that will be the final damage done to enemies. Now run the game with F5 and press space. You'll see this instance being created and it looks like the player is swinging a sword. Now there is a simple bug here. If you stand and face to the left and press space, the sword will be created to the right. And that happens no matter which direction you're standing in. It's always created to the right because the default direction when there is no input is zero, which does point to the right. So we're gonna quickly fix that first. Let's go back into the player object and in the create event, I'm gonna make a variable called facing. This will store at all times which direction the player faced in when it gave any input from the WASD keys. To make this work, let's go into the step event and inside this block where we check if there's any input from the WASD keys. And after setting the sprite, we're gonna do this. We're gonna set the facing variable and its value will be the direction from the input, which we already calculated over here so I'm just going to select this function call, cut it with control X, come back here and paste it here with control V. So now we are calculating this direction whenever there's any input and it will be stored in this variable over here. Now we can come back to this part where we are creating the sword and the sword's direction will be equal to that variable. So even when the player is not moving, it will remember where it was moving and it will use that direction to create the sword. So run the game, stand to the left, press space, and the sword will be created to the left. Now press up and release it, press space, and the sword will be created there. So with that fixed and out of the way, let's work on attacking enemies with this sword. 
basically whenever there's a collision between this object and an enemy that enemy should receive a little knockback and then its health should be lowered by the damage value of the attack instance we are first of all going to program a knockback in the enemy object the way it'll work is this when the enemy is hit we'll set alarm one in that enemy while alarm one is counting down the enemy will keep moving from its knockback and once alarm one is executed the knockback will stop go into your objects and double click on obj enemy parent over here in the create event let's make two new variables these will be the knockback values on the x and y axes that's how much the enemy is moving while alarm one is active let's go into the events up here and add a collision event with the obj attack object a collision event runs when two instances collide with each other or overlap on the screen so this event will run when this enemy collides with the player's sword attack so in this event we want to enable the knockback but only if alarm one is not yet counting down so we'll check that in a condition if alarm one is below zero it means it's not been set yet because then it'll be minus one so in that case we're gonna reduce the hp of the enemy by the damage value of the other instance the other instance here is the sword attack because that's what you're colliding with so this will get the damage from that and then subtract it from the hp of the enemy then let's set the image color of the enemy to red to tell the player that it's been hit now we set the knockback values for the x knockback this will be the sign of the difference between the current x and the sword's x a sign is a value that's either minus one zero or one so it gives us the general direction in which you need to move for the y knockback we then do the same but using the y coordinates then finally we set alarm 1 to 20 so the knockback will run for 20 frames now let's go and add that alarm 1 event in this event we are first going to reset the image color to white then we're gonna run a condition to check if the hp of the enemy is at or below zero in that case we destroy the enemy instance because well its hp is zero and it has been defeated so once this event runs alarm one will become inactive again allowing this condition to be true and the enemy to be hit again now everything is in place apart from one thing while this alarm is counting down we want the enemy to move with the knockback x and y values for that let's go into the step event and add some code at the top of this event this is checking if alarm one is counting down by checking if it's at or above zero because remember when it's inactive it'll be minus one so in that case we are changing the target x position of the enemy we are setting it to the current x position of the enemy plus the knockback x value then we are doing the same for target y just using the y values so run the game you can now go near enemies hit space and they will get knocked back if you hit them enough times they will eventually be defeated so with that being functional we'll finally work on allowing enemies to hurt the player the way this will work will be similar to how we program the alarm in the enemy just that there won't be any knockback when the player is hit we'll set alarm zero because the player's alarm zero is unused meanwhile in the enemy we had to use alarm one the alarm will be set when the player is hit and while the alarm is counting down the player can't be hit again so this gives us some time to run away when the alarm hits you will be able to take damage again go into your objects and double click on obj player let's go to the events menu and add a new collision event with the obj enemy parent object so this will run whenever the player touches any enemy instance here let's first make sure that alarm zero is not active only then we can be attacked and then i'll first of all make the hp of the player go down by the damage of the enemy then i'll set alarm zero to 60 so we get a whole second during which we can't be attacked again then i'll set the image color to red to tell the player hey you've taken damage then let's check if the hp is at or below zero and if it is we'll restart the room because you've been defeated and now you've got to start the level all over again finally let's go and add the alarm zero event 
When this runs, the player can now be here again, so we set the image color back to white. The alarm will become inactive once this hits, which will allow this condition to run again and the player to be hit. Run the game and if you touch an enemy, you will turn red and if you get enough hits, then eventually the game will restart. So we have programmed our real-time sword combat. You can now go and watch the next part, which is about stats and leveling up. Or you can also watch the alternate version of this tutorial that covers turn-based battle. So, see you in the next one.